The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 5, is all things Mandalorian. But with Din Djarin back in the fold, how does Book of Boba Fett continue from here? Find out in this Star Wars Lad speculation video. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's predictions and speculations for the Book of Boba Fett. This week, we will be talking about next week's episode, Chapter 6 of the Book of Boba Fett. If you have not seen our review for Chapter 5, The Return of the Mandalorian, check that out now. It is a full spoiler review where we talk about the episode completely, give our thoughts and opinions on the show as a whole, and then dive into everything that happened within that episode specifically. If you haven't seen Chapter 5 of The Mandalorian, well, then you probably shouldn't watch this one either because we will be going into spoilers on Chapter 5 in order to talk about Chapter 6. And then, so watch Chapter 5 of The Mandalorian, Watch our spoiler review of Chapter 5, and then come here and watch Chapter 6 predictions and speculation. We'll be diving into everything that teases what might happen in the next episode, which is very few things, considering not much has changed. It's kind of a catch-up episode with what's going on with Din Djarin while the Book of Boba Fett is going on, and it kind of catches us up back, back up <laughs> with his timeline. Um, like we said in that last review, there's a lot of good stuff here. But there's not much boba. In fact, there's zero boba. So uh, before we get started, please hit that like button down below. Comment and let us know what you think will happen in Chapter 6 of the Book of Boba Fett. I keep wanting to say The Mandalorian, but this is not The Mandalorian. This is Book of Boba Fett. Uh, let us know what you think might happen in Chapter 6 of Book of Boba Fett. And then please subscribe for Star Wars content three days a week. We will be covering the rest of the Book of Boba Fett and all the Star Wars shows coming this week, year and everything and beyond. So stick around here for more Star Wars content, as well as uh, the next episode of How to Adapt is coming out on Monday with Darth Bane, uh, if you want to check that out. If you haven't checked out the Thrawn one, that one's up too. So anyway, diving into this video. Uh, okay, chapter six. Where do we start from here? Uh, like I said, caught us up with Din Djarin's story, kind of what he's been doing. He's been doing back to bounty hunting, as we predicted last week in chapter five. It was pretty easy to see. He was going to throw himself back into this work and kind of dive back into this world as he tries to kind of distance his mind from Grogu, but he can't really get his mind off Grogu because that was basically his son. So he's searching for the rest of his covert who have been, he has not seen since Mandalorian season one, where we last saw them. And they were pretty much all dead, and we didn't know what happened to the armorer. She's still around. We still have Paz Vizsla. And that seems to be it. It's just the two of them. They are hiding out on this halo ring type thing. Um, and uh, yeah, they're. we don't know why they're there specifically, but they're there, and they're hiding out. And we get some more information on Grogu and all this stuff. Uh, so there's a lot to predict and speculate about with the Mandalorian Season 3 here. Um, I guess we could save that for the end and really first try to focus in on Boba Fett, uh, <laughs> as we probably should, because this is the book of Boba Fett predictions and speculation. So let's look at how this episode ends. Fennec approaches Din with money for working for Boba Fett to be the muscle, as they say in the last episode in chapter four. And Mando says, no, it's on the house because you did so much for me. I said that that should be how Mando treats him because Boba did a lot for him. You know, it's only nice to reciprocate. Uh, so that's great. And that's it. That's our Boba Fett uh, references in this episode. So now we have to tie in chapter four and chapter five. Okay, we have one less episode of this show now. That's a big help for trying to predict how this show will unfold as a whole. My mind, I think we are... 100% done with flashbacks now. I would I would be willing to say we are 100% done with flashbacks unless it has something to do with the Daniel Logan Boba, something that's further back than the Tatooine stuff. I think we're done with Tatooine flashbacks. I think this cemented it. It's like, okay, we only have two episodes to wrap up this entire story. Like, how are we tying the Tuscans back in? Is that even going to tie back in? Maybe that doesn't. Uh, do, what are we doing with the Pikes? What's all these different crime families doing across Tatooine? Are they all going to backstab each other? How are they going to work together? We got the Trandoshans. <laughs> we got the Klaatuinians. We got the, um, what's the other one? The Aqualish. So we've got all these guys. We've got the mayor. What's going on with the mayor? We got the pikes. Is there somebody bigger behind the pikes? Is this really 
just gonna all tie in the mandalorian season three is there no book of boba fett season two is this really just a bridge show i think there's all these questions that i now have after this episode and i don't want to act too hyperbolic with this but i mean this show this episode really does change everything because it is like the Mandalorian uh, book of Boba Fett was not announced with the rest of the shows. It was announced at the end of Mandalorian season two as a tag, as a post credit scene. We didn't know it was coming out. We initially thought, okay, that was to preserve the idea of what Boba's going to do in the Mandalorian to protect us from knowing spoilers about that. And it very well could be, but we all kind of build this as Mandalorian season 2.5. And even the creators have kind of built it as Mandalorian season 2.5. And now that we get this episode where it is literally a Mandalorian episode, it is Mandalorian season 2.5, Book of Boba Fett. And um, there's positives and there's negatives about that. But at least we know that the show is going to have a finale, the two parts that Din Djarin will be in. You will be part of the muscle. I hope there's more muscle, but I'm not sure now because it seems to be so focused in on the Mandalorian universe that will it attract all these other bounty hunters i still want that crazy hero shot of all the empire strikes back bounty hunters i think we probably could still get that i think we're going to dive back into the bounty hunter stuff next week but yeah i'm starting to lean more towards connections are going to be tied to the mandalorian now more closely than ever because this show seems to almost be wanting to just set up mandalorian season three now (laughs) versus finishing off what boba fett might be doing in the future rather than just by the end of the show. I feel like Boba's journey might be over by this season and we might not get season two, who knows? But anyway, what are your thoughts on kind of the direction the show will be going in now that we only have two episodes left and we just had a third, (laughs) the third to last episode with no Boba Fett. I think you're right in a lot of ways. I think this is very much a bridge season. It's been considered Manda Duke and Y, like you said. Um, I think a lot of the issues that people have with Mando season two about like, overstuffing things like cameos and kind of taking away from like the overall just regularness of the galaxy in a way it feels like it applies to this book of Boba Fett episode because it feels like they took away some of like the regularity of Mos Espa and the politics that were building up there took away some regularity of being around Jabba's palace some regularity of expecting a flashback it was just the Mando episode right so Again, like I said in the review, I'm worried that we're going to spend time seeing like Grogu and Luke and maybe a Han and uh, what is it, young Ben, because we saw a what is it, one of those deep fake guys, uh, Shamook on uh, YouTube, get hired by ILM to specifically do deep fake stuff. And with that budget and technology, I'm sure he's been he's going to do something for this show at this rate. It, it seems like this would line up pretty well. Maybe something for Ahsoka as well, but yeah, but uh, I'm hopefully that's more of an off-screen thing that kind of happens. We don't really get to see it. Maybe it can be saved for like an after credits of like, oh, Boba's like, oh, where'd you go off to? And then we see uh, what happened, right? Um, I would love a little bit of attitude from Fennec to be like, no, this is kind of time. Well, like we got to consider the time for this like we don't have much of it we we could be attacked at any moment by the pikes like like you should help us out here your kid's going to be safe no matter what he's with luke skywalker of all people but i think this will be a two-parter finale like the uh what is the first season was i i think it's not going to be like half season two where we had that whole episode of like let's get everyone together and then we do that whole finale i think they're we just have to like after this episode, I, I, I know we discussed it in our last speculation video of like, okay, do we really need three episodes to like deal with, you know, everything that goes on with the final battle with the pikes and all that. And I, I said, probably not. I thought maybe this would be an episode split between Bobo and Din kind of sharing their perspectives on their changed lives, what they can learn from each other as they're prepping for war and this was just a din episode it wasn't anything to do with boba that being said now because of all the din stuff is out of the way i don't expect them to take more than out of this next two episodes let's say they're 15 minutes i expect them only to have like big key scenes and maybe 15 minutes of it i expect the rest of it has to be dominated by boba and let let other people like chrysanthemum and all that jump in here and there we're gonna see boba ride the rancor that's 
more than anything, I know this is a bridge season. Maybe B- Boba Story is done after this, and he only shows up in episodes. Maybe Mando season three, they flip it where it's like a Book of Boba Fett episode in the middle of season three of Mando because they're trying to connect everything. Hopefully they put a little bit more glue and padding around it compared to this episode. But these next two episodes have to not only show some intense, amazing stuff on tattooing that looks stunning, they got to have Boba kill and go crazy and really at least cement that like, hey, you might not like this show as much as you like Mando, but this was two episodes of Boba just going off, going crazy, doing everything he can. And Din just happens to be there adding a few extra punches and all that. I think we have to do that. And I, I hope Din doesn't like use his like, dark saber or anything even if he does i hope it's not just like he just starts chopping people he's got weapons he can do other things and this isn't something that you can just it's not really a situation i think you can just start chopping up people left and right um i then again you can't be riding a rancor through the streets either so maybe i'm just blowing smoke up my ass but uh yeah i I, i'm expecting this next episode at least we'll have all the bounty hunters collected in the first 20 30 minutes and boba hopefully he has a few more things i I mean if you're going into a situation where it's going to be all out war and you're not sure of manpower from the all the other powers that have kind of divided up most espa you should at least yourself be not only in tip-top shape and healed but like coming in with a little extra like now you're back you're a crime lord still but a crime lord's got to like go back to what he knows best and that's that's to wage war whenever if the if the scale is big enough for that mission for the work that needs to be done so i'm expecting a lot of that i'm expecting it to carry over to episode two and we get a little bit more like i I, like i feel like a lot of this show has to still justify itself for something greater and i think a lot of the ending of the second part will deal with like oh the pikes weren't the real power behind all this struggle it was crimson dawn or we see something with cad bane and stuff like that like and that's another thing we i think we're gonna have a lot of cad bane stuff maybe cad bane could show up because it is it's rumored that this next episode is written by feloni so most likely directed by him too so if cad bane does show up maybe he's hired by or loaned out to at least to the pikes for this battle and boba clears the way before a massive battle of like all fronts takes place for the control of most espa and the criminal underworld of tatooine but at least in this episode get boba and his whole crew set up and if you're gonna bring cad bane make it like a boba cad bane solo like 20 minute part of the episode i i want boba to just you we saw din jarns take the wheel and literally shoot like he does with his sublight engines like all the way ahead of like every expectation a book of Boba Fett had so far, and I want Boba to catch him, catch him right back up to him, and grab him back. Say, "No, we're here. We're on Tatooine, and we're gonna make this count." That's what my hope is. He has to say, "I'm the Daimyo, and this is my show." <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's. I'd love to see Cad Bane, and I, I I've been wanting to see Cad Bane for so long. He was number one on my ten characters that should be in the book of Boba Fett. He was he's been you know, he's my favorite bounty hunter, honestly. Like next to Boba, he's my favorite bounty hunter, and I really want that. But I just don't know how far to stretch my expectations or what I can predict in two episodes because it feels like we don't even have enough resolve to resolve what we have already. That like how many extraneous elements could you throw in and like the pikes don't seem like they're super developed as a modern timeline villain for boba like yeah we have the emotional stakes of his past right but like we have not set them up as like why they're so important to take down in the present timeline i'd like to get a little bit more than that other than just relying on our knowledge of clone wars and rebels to be like oh the pikes are bad <laughs> okay like why are they bad now in the book of boba fett like that was a long time ago we saw the pikes last so i'd like that a little bit more set up i'd love to see crimson dawn but that to me if like adding all this stuff at the end hence it's season two if we don't get season two then i like that's where the show's now tossed up in the air to me because i would have bet a lot of money before that we at least get season two of the book of boba fett like out of all the shows out of ahsoka 
I, I don't know if I could see a season two of Ahsoka, but I could see a season two of the book of Boba Fett just because of what it's telling. It's Boba Fett and he doesn't really fit into the Thrawn story that they're building. So you can remove his ties to the Mandalorian universe in season one if they were doing this the way I would have done it. I would have removed his ties a little bit more to the Mandalorian and kind of set him free and kind of said, okay, you're on your own now and you can show back up in the Mandalorian because you're tied up enough, but you've got your own world basically of Star Wars. The underworld of Star Wars has always been its own unique area of the world like it's its own unique thing that the kind of the empire doesn't even really touch the jedi don't touch like everybody just kind of leaves them alone and to me that was a perfect avenue especially with the way they set up boba fett as taking control of tatooine to say you're on your own in your own world and we can do whatever we want now with you we have so many years worth of stories to tell with boba fett and like all these different bounty hunters things that we can do i wanted to see uh like a X master type like old samurai and his old master type thing with him and Cad Bane as a, like a season actual villain and we get to see kind of some of the backstory with Boba Fett but redone in live action and I wanted to see all of that and now with the way this is gone I'm not sure what we're gonna get and maybe maybe in the future yeah he'll claim Daimyo in this he'll set aside all doubts that he's Daimyo and maybe we'll get a season two where people do challenge him for the throne maybe but Cad Bane is like no I'm better than you even though I'm old now like maybe we do get bounty hunters out start to rise up and challenge Boba as he took over this kind of a, not being born into this right and we've we've develop this whole idea of rightful rulers of the throne and who's afraid of who in the underworld and how the huts have an established crime base and just why, why they're powerful and why they rule but i mean we haven't there's so many ideas within the underworld itself that i'd love to explore but now the show set it up to where we only have two episodes to wrap up the like very small deep nuggets that we've gotten now <laughs> and like the nuggets we've gotten now have only been like chapter so chapter three was our episode that took place pretty much all in the modern time other than that chapter two was 75 or 80 percent in flashbacks <laughs> chapter one was like 60 percent flashbacks chapter four was like 65 70 percent flashbacks <laughs> so, so now it's like we barely have had any modern story and now it's going to wrap up so i'm wondering and hoping i i said this i I don't know if it was last episode or the two episodes ago of our predictions. I'm worried about Marvel syndrome of, oh, oh my God, this show's about to end. We got to wrap it up. We got to wrap it up. And just like all these things get cut short. I worry about that. If it is a limited series, that that's what's going to happen. Cause that's happened on a ton of Marvel shows lately. The Star Wars shows have been better plotted out. And with the Mandalorian team plotting it, I'm not, I wasn't as concerned about that because all of this is tied together all over the universe, but it almost seems like they're stretching for ideas for what they can do with the Boba Fett show, which is yeah. mind boggling because they have which... not only years, decades of legend stories that they can pull from, but also like it's Boba Fett. He's so cool. You could do whatever you want, whatever you want. Like, uh, I, I don't and know I think, I think that's the biggest issue because we have all these expect. It, it's the curse of Boba Fett. He's only had five minutes of live action screen time. Where he's like cool and shoots at Luke and is, is told not to disintegrate people. And the next time we see him, he's literally just like hit at the back of his jetpack by a blind dude. His gun is chopped by a Luke and he's swallowed by Sarlacc. And yeah, if you're if you don't watch the Clone Wars, you don't know anything about the younger him. Oh, Boba Fett shows up in Attack of the Clones. You don't really care. He's just there because it's a tie-in that was made by George Lucas. But that's the only thing. Like I guess that. I feel like so much of this is because of like expectations of what Boba is based on what we've seen from a mix of animated stuff and legends material and the reality of what Boba is for the majority of people, this cool looking silent dude. And that's been compounded by the fact that, Hey, we tried for so many years to make this rumored Boba Fett movie, Boba Fett movie spinoff. We're going to make a Boba Fett, a star Wars story that doesn't happen. Josh Trank just, tanked his own uh chance at making a star wars movie you know there's and some maybe mangle directing it he doesn't do it and then you know they shift their whole strategy over to disney plus and the mandalorian comes out and the mandalorian is kind of what we think of boba but with a lot less bloodlust a little bit more code and a little bit more canon connections to just the overall mandalorian way because Boba is not entirely a Mandalorian, if he, even 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 if even if he is connected to a Mandalorian, he's just the dude wearing Mandalorian armor. So it's like 
you've taken all the expectations of Boba and you've given them to this guy who's in shiny, bulkier, much more fit armor than the Boba Fett that we're seeing on screen. And then to make that the double compounds even more compounded, you now have to deal with this five-year timeline gap between Return of the Jedi and Mandalorian. And they felt such a strong need to like develop his character in those five years, but also continue the story in the present day after the Mandalorian season two. It's just, I don't love this structure at all. I'm going to trust that compared to like a lot of the Marvel shows, the ending will be stronger because the live action so far has been strong. I expect that we're going to see some awesome and wicked wizard looking things happening. And I'm expecting Boba to really take up the true essence of his character now that he's healed. Now we get to see him do everything he did in the Mando episode five or six or whatever in season two, where he just whooped all those stormtroopers ass, but do it for two episodes. I need that of him at this point. I need the present day story to show him kicking ass, but I also need a clear, definite like development of the pikes if you're gonna bring these pikes make them a huge focus of this first episode but then suddenly we got feloni is feloni just gonna bring in one of his characters like cad bane and do something or is that going to be saved for a finale of some sorts is that for a season two is this a limited series we don't know and look i I think a lot of people started coming to our channel because we were pretty decent at making speculations for the next episodes of the bad batch we're telling you it's it's really hard to do anything for the book of both fit what it's interest it's very strange structure and it's flashbacks and all that and then on top of that now we've gotten this episode which it's amazing it's great star wars content but how does that prepare us for book of boba fit basically in no way yeah, with, with the Bad Batch, I think we're so used to that Filoni formula and the way he looks at Star Wars just in general and the way that those animated shows are going to run through his vision that I think it's easier to find the threads, even though, you know, we will have those random episodes that show some, like, uh, what was it? It was the Pike episode that was just kind of out of nowhere and had nothing to do with anything in the Bad Batch where they go back with Sid and, yeah. Um, even though you get those the main plot is relatively normal to follow because it's Filoni and we know what he's like and we know his style. But this one seems strangely not Filoni, even though his name is the producer, even though Favreau is writing the episodes, it doesn't seem as cohesive as the Mandalorian did. It doesn't seem like it has really any idea of where it wants to go and how it wants to tell its story for Boba Fett. Like it, it feels just like, like a Mandalorian season 2.5 and they didn't know what to do with Boba and I and they've done some cool things they've done some very cool things and we can still get so many of our legend stories with Boba or like versions of our legend stories with Boba they haven't really erased things it's just like the fact that we don't (laughs) we haven't really done anything either like like we've had now five episodes of the show and only four of them feature Boba Fett and most of them don't feature Boba Fett as the Boba Fett we saw in The Mandalorian that got us all excited for this show and really don't feature the Boba Fett that we all know and love. And I'd love to see how he gets there. And that's why there was so much patience with episode one and two and started to fade away in three, but kind of caught back up with four. And now I'm, I'm just one, I'm, I'm concerned, hopeful, but also I, I, if season two was announced tomorrow, I'd be like, I am okay. trusting them. I'm trusting okay. them. Uh, my hand, right. my trust is in their hands. But with no season right. two promise, then I'm like, oh, there's so many threads that they've set up. Not just like my, I hope as a Star Wars fan, not my, my, not my hope as a Star Wars fan who's read Legends of Boba Fett, or not my hope of Star Wars fan who's played with Boba Fett toys as a kid and imagined stories about Boba Fett. It's stuff they've set up in Mandalorian and in Book of Boba Fett that I'm going, how are we going to tie all this in? <laughs> and how are we going to wrap up like all these some of these other things that should be kind of obvious to his character? To me, that's what's starting to scare me is we don't get season two announcement. Then yeah. I'm just like, what was the purpose of this? And why didn't we get some of the basics that I feel like we should have gotten with Boba? And it feels like there has to be a purpose to this season. Like, even if it is a fill-in, it seems very clear that they're trying to make Boba a big part of this Mando verse. 
like if you haven't checked that Liam's heir to the empire adaptation, like maybe Boba is now our, our fill in for the criminal underworld kind of being involved with the, whatever happens with the eventual return of Thrawn with yeah. Ezra, with Talon Ahsoka card. and all that talent card, right? Like maybe he's a fill in, maybe he's a connection who knows, but you would think at least, okay, if he's worthy of a show, then there's going to be something of fruit here. Like there's going to be something noticeable and like changing at least one big part of this tie in story that is the Mandovers. Cause I, I feel like I have to shift over to like doing speculation on the Mandoverse now because it, it seems very clear that this season isn't just supposed to be like a Mando 2.5. It feels like it's, it's it's a thread that maybe is not as strong as others, but it's going to be a thread into how the criminal underworld is going to play a role in the eventual return of Thrawn and all the galactic fighting and everything. And Look, I'm just going to put this out on the record. If this is going to be a big crossover event, put it in theaters. If it's like three or four episodes, I want to see that on the big screen. I'm just saying, please, limited screenings. I'll drive. I'll do something. But it, it seems painfully obvious that like we are going to spend time with Tamar Morrison because he's become developed as a Boba Fett character. Even though we haven't gotten a lot of it, he's developed the Boba Fett. He is now with Jeremy Bullock, rest in peace, gone. He is now essentially the main and sole steward of Boba Fett. And it seems very clear that they want him to continue that. They want him to have a role. So they gave him a show. But what are you doing with the show? You're you're letting it be a fill-in. You're letting it have some interesting and confusing structure. You got these threads of like these young Camino moments. Like, is that supposed to be addressed? Are there some threads with this new girl character in this mod bike gang? Is she going to be taken under his wing? Uh, is the Pikes the real villain? And who are the Pikes really? A little bit more about Tatooine maybe. Is there an external force kind of pulling the strings? There's so many questions to be asked. And we can't speculate because we are now considering what was the point of this season? Will there be more to this? Is this a season one or is this an event series like an Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to be? I don't know. At, like at this point, I'm still hopeful that there's going to be a season two because i don't think you make a whole season to a show fill in or not if you're not planning on continuing it for at least one more season but at the the same time is that a guarantee at this point with how they've handled it who knows yeah and i think um when we've talked about this in the past i've always been pro season two because they've been pretty upfront with us on shows that are only one season. They were non-committal on whether Bad Batch was two seasons. It was two seasons. They were non-committal on Loki being two seasons. It's two seasons. So they pretty much always said, yeah, WandaVision, one season. Falcon Winter Soldier, one season. Obi-Wan, one season. Now it, with this, there's been no word. So hopefully, I'm really hoping and praying this season, we <laughs> get a season two because there's so many cool ideas. And and yeah, listening to you rattle off all the plot points that we still haven't wrapped up, we got we need a two uh two and a half hour episodes to wrap this show up, <laughs> and maybe we'll get there and finally wrap some of this stuff up. But yeah, that's it. Uh, last thing before we end, the one thread we have is the Grogu thing. Just a quick yes or no: Is Grogu in net, in one of the chapters of Book of Boba Fett, chapter six or seven? I say yes, and hopefully as an after credit scene with. Maybe a young Ben, maybe a, a DH Han Solo, but I don't want it to be the start of the next episode. No way. I also say yes. I too hope it's not the start of the next episode, <laughs> but Grogu sells the Mandalorian right now, and I would be shocked if we talk about Grogu, but we never see him. So I, I yes, I would very much like that to be a post credit scene or even like chapter seven. They finish, they beat the pikes, everybody feels like, oh, we won. And Mando's and it maybe there's like some type of weird narration ending the whole thing. And we see Mando like show up and Luke in the distance with Grogu, you know, like something like that. Maybe even like kind of you know, that fake picture that came out that had Luke and Grogu like lifting things, the force, like kind of something like that where they're training. Love it to like love to see like Yavin 4 or some type of reference back to like Luke's Jedi Academy, anything like that. I think it will be hopefully a quick shot that kind of teases at the future, and then maybe we get an end credit scene that's like, no, Crimson Dawn's really behind this. And and just talking about this, 
further too. I would lose my mind if in the last episode somebody just walks up to Boba and he's like, oh, I'd like to do a job for you. My name's Talon Card. I would be like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Um, and they're going to do something like, we know they're going to do something like that in chapter seven where it's just going to be mine. We're going to get a character reveal. We're like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. But really then it's going to kind of like cloud our view of the whole season. Um, but yeah, I too do think yeah. <laughs> it's going to be in the show. If there's one thing that these shows have done compared to the Marvel ones, they end every season amazing. And they're two for two, hopefully three for three. We'll see what they're actually going to do, though. Yep, we'll see. Uh, There's a lot to think about going into next week, just about the future of the show. And if you've thought about it and listened to us talk about it for the last 30 minutes or so, let us know down below what you think is going to happen in Chapter 6, Chapter 7, and really if there's going to be a Season 2 of The Book of Boba Fett, or maybe you have predictions for The Mandalorian Season 3. Let us know down below, and please, if you haven't, hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel for Star Wars content three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you haven't checked out our other videos this week, check out uh, Karam's favorite tunes from Monday. Check it out. It's a fun, <laughs> it's a fun, entertaining video that Sonic put it up on Monday. Check it out. It's on music on in Star Wars prequels. And then, if you haven't checked out our Book of Boba Fett Chapter 5 spoiler review, check that out. It was posted on Wednesday. And then Monday will be the release of the Darth Bane How to Adapt book. So, so yeah, you're going to want to check that out. We have some new developments with the world of Darth Bane from Star Wars number 20 that will tie in heavily to that video. So you want to check that out and stay tuned for next week for three more Star Wars videos. Actually, four will be next week. So we'll have comic reviews back next week as well. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.